What's up guys, Maddie Mo here. Another year has passed and it's another Apple's worldwide developer conference. This year was more based on small improvements, but important improvements. So here are my top eight announcements from WWDC 2015. The first major announcement is going to be about OS X, and it's going to be OS X 10.11, and they're calling it El Capitan. Now, El Capitan is not going to be a huge redesign overhaul. It's going to be more of a user overall user experience and performance boost. So, for example, Safari is going to get some new features, such as the ability to pin web pages to your landing page, which is going to make things a lot easier. You're probably familiar with this if you're a huge Chrome user, and you're also going to have the ability to mute tabs without actually entering the web page itself. So sometimes you'll click on something, you'll go to a web page, something will pop up and automatically start playing audio. And you have to go to that actual web page and then mute it. But you can actually do this from the top of the tab itself without actually entering it. And on top of this, Apple is finally gonna give OS X split window. Now this has been present since Windows 8 for, for PCs. So OS X is gonna finally have the ability to split windows and then drag those windows to different docks or, or on your dashboard. And finally, Apple is bringing Metal from mobile, which was announced last year, to OS X to provide even more performance enhancements. So OS X is getting a lot of under the hood optimization. Next up is iOS 9. And just like Android M and El Capitan, it's not gonna redefine or visually change a lot of things. It's gonna be more behind the background and providing a better overall user experience. For example, the Notes app is gonna be more intuitive. You can draw on it now. You can add radio buttons and add checklists. Passbook is also gonna be renamed to Wallet, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. And the Newsstand app is being replaced by News and it's gonna to get totally revamped. So it's gonna be a lot more customizable. It's gonna hit your personal needs and it's gonna look a lot more visually appealing. So think of Flipboard, but the Apple way. And then on top of this, HealthKit is even getting stronger. It's gonna be able to detect UV exposure and it's also gonna be able to track your period if you're a female. And also, overall battery life is gonna get better on your iPhone as well. It's gonna have a low power mode. It's gonna be able to extend battery life by up to three hours. And one of the more important announcements about iOS 9, it's finally getting multi-window. Now, you're not gonna get a multi-window on the iPhone 6. It's gonna be available for the iPad, and it's also gonna be available for the iPhone 6 Plus. So this is great news for those of you that wanna take advantage of that screen real estate. So it's great that they're finally including this in iOS 9. And the last thing I just wanna mention is that iOS 9 is going to be available to the public as a beta. So usually what they usually do is only allow the beta to go to developers, but the public can actually sign up and download the beta. So if you want to do that, head over to their website, sign up, and then Apple will eventually allow you to download it and play around with it as well. The next major announcement was better Siri. And Siri is going to get a lot more powerful, just like Google Now is getting more powerful. Now, it's definitely not going to be as powerful as Google Now, but it's going to be a lot better than it is today. So, for example, it's going to do a lot of things with context. So, for example, if you get an email saying your flight is two weeks from now, Siri will automatically detect it and add it automatically into your calendar. And it also does a lot of things by detecting your moods as well. So for example, if you're at the gym, Siri detect that you're working out and then it'll suggest an energizing song for you to listen to. And Apple also says that Siri, it got 40% more accurate. Now again, it's not gonna be as powerful as Google Now, but it's gonna make the whole overall user experience of using Siri a lot better on iOS. Next up is Apple Pay, and they're expanding to even more retailers. Retailers such as Trader Joe's and JCPenney will all have Apple Pay support. Now Square, which is the company that provides credit card readers, will also be able to add compatibility to use Apple Pay's service. So any new Square devices that you go out there and you pick up to use for your store will also have Apple Pay capabilities. Now if you live in the UK, good news, Apple Pay is coming to the UK at the end of July, and a bunch of banks are already on board. No worries when other countries will get it, but I heard here in Canada, it's gonna get it sometime this fall. And finally, I just wanna mention that Passbook has been renamed to Wallet and is now gonna include cards for loyalty programs. So I don't know if you guys watched the Google I.O. conference, they announced uh, Google Pay, and they're gonna have loyalty programs. So the same sort of idea is gonna be happening for Apple Pay as well. Moving on to the next announcement, which was actually about the Apple Watch. And the Apple Watch has only been out for a couple of months now, and they're already gonna be bringing a big update. They're calling the update Watch OS 2. Now with Watch OS 2, developers are gonna be able to use the speakers on the watch to play music, 
play video audio, and do a bunch of other cool things. And they're also adding a lot of new watch faces. So for example, one of the watch faces will allow you to take photos from your library, and it'll automatically change the background of your watch face every time you lift up your wrist. So they're trying to bring more watch faces than what's currently on the store right now, which is not too many. And on top of all this, you're going to have a new timeline, which lets you see things in the future. So if you have an event, let's say two weeks or three weeks from now, and you scroll the actual crown forward, you'll be able to see what events are coming up. And the same thing holds true for the past and the present. Next up is HomeKit, which is pretty limited right now, but it's actually going to be able to do a lot more things like be able to control window shades, motion sensors, and security systems. Now, HomeKit can only be controlled through the Apple TV, and it looks like Apple's going to open it up to the iPhone and iPad. So hopefully we'll see something soon from that. And next up is CarPlay, and it looks like Apple's allowing manufacturers to create their own apps for the CarPlay operating system. So manufacturers will be able to create their own apps that allow you to control the AC, the heat of your car, your car seats, your sensors whatever they decide to put on there and on top of that they're making it available for different screen sizes and eventually you won't have to plug in your iPhone at all you can actually do everything wirelessly which I'm assuming will be through Bluetooth and finally the last announcement I want to mention is Apple music now Apple music is gonna be similar to other streaming services such as Google Play music and RDO and Spotify it's gonna be able to do things such as curate playlists watch HD music and you can also listen to radio stations but the biggest difference with Apple music it's gonna have the ability to play global radio stations that Apple's created themselves. So there's going to be three of them so far that are going to be 24 hours, seven days a week. So if you're into big radio stations, you might prefer Apple Music over the competing services. Now, Apple Music is going to cost $9.99 per month. The first three months will be free. And if you're a family of up to six people, you can opt in for the family price, which will be $14.99 a month. So the price is pretty competitive to all the other services out there. Now, here's the big thing. Apple is actually bringing Apple Apple Music to other platforms. So it's going to come out in iOS shortly and then it's going to make its way over to Android and Windows sometime in the fall. So what do you guys think of this year's Apple's WWDC 2015 conference? Did you like all the announcements that were made? Do you wish there was more or do you think it was just perfect? Let me know in the comments below your thoughts and opinions about this year's conference. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. If you thought it was helpful, let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see everybody in the next video.